Hey, what's up guys? Team Hard Life, Captain Albert Tucci here. All right, so since we've been doing the videos on how to make your own cell lines and so forth, we've had some customers come up with different kind of floats and so forth that they have acquired and or want to make another cell line. Some of them are like these. But the thing is, the sea floats are a bit more in a circular pattern compared to the oval ones that I'm using. So they brought them by to see if we can work our magic on them to get the tape on there and the reflective tape on there so that way they can use them as well as set them up with the snap swivels and the swivels on this side so that way it'll hold to their line. So let's go ahead and get it started. I like this. It's cool. My beads. I've got my one out swivels and then my 1.0 double minis. I won't be using these beads this time because I'm going to actually use 100 pound test on these. So we've got our swivels, our sleeves, our beads. So on these, I have used stainless steel before, but they don't last very long still, even in the saltwater environment. So to spend that extra money when these will last about the same time. It's easier just to go with the non-stainless. So here we go, got those. All right, so here's our float. What you wanna do first is to run your monofilament through. And you'll take your first washer. Get the beads out real quick. Then stick our bead through. Need your sleeve. Snap. Actually, on this side we're gonna do our swivel, and you'll find out why, the reason why here in a little bit. So right through here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna extend it out, bring in a little bit of extra material of the monofilament through, then I'm gonna send it back through this way. I'm gonna send my tag in through the other side. Once it comes through, I'm going to repeat my process, my washer, bead, sleeve, there's snap swivels here. These are a size smaller, these are rated for 125 pounds, which for what we're doing and what it's needed to be done with these, that is going to be perfectly fine. What we can do too is put an offshore loop on this end, since we are using mono. my tag in there and go and get that print. Make sure to have your sleeve poking out on both sides before you crimp down. You don't ever crimp your sleeve all the way to the end, especially on monofilament. So once that's there, I'm gonna pull my my slack in this way. What I like to do is stick that little tag in into the into the bead so it makes it sit nice and flush that way. If you leave it sticking out, it tends to make it stick or uh, hang awkwardly on there. So. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take up all my slack this way. 
And by me pulling on my main line over here and pulling back on this swivel, that's why I also put one here. It does two things. One, it gives me grip so that way I can tighten my line in the middle between this end of my washer and this end of my washer so that way it sits nice and tight and it don't hang off the side with a bunch of slack. So I'm going to do that. See how it's got it it's sucking it down there? Well, all right. So what I'll do is I'll get my crimper here and prep for it. Now I'll use my other crimper and what I'm going to do is I'm going to pry them against each other before I crimp. And the reason I did that was because, so that way, as you can tell, my my washers and my mono ain't moving all over the place. So I'm gonna cut this real quick. So by me pulling it the way I did, I've actually allowed this to have a free moving snap. So that way as it's pulled through the water, it's not getting tied up real quick on to the main line of the cell line. And then two, I got a swivel on this side. So if I ever wanted to take this and go tarpon fishing off of Bob Hall or off a boat or something, they can use this as a secondary float. But as you can tell too, this is all nice and tight on there. So we're good to go. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this edge off and I'm going to apply my tape and oh, that'll work even better. Since it is foam, all I'm going to do is put pressure on it and it'll smash it down and give me a nice flat surface, semi-flat to work with so I can get my tape on there. As you can tell, it's very, very porous, so that's where that duct tape it's going to come in handy. So I'll continue on. Once I get them all done, then I'll take it to the next step.
All right, so my next materials are my red for my red, and I'm gonna go white on the yellow because I ran out of yellow for right now, but it'll still get the point across and get me what I need. So I stay legal, or they stay legal. Flatten out these edges real quick. Nice, that one I already did. Here's our final float, the red one. Almost forgot it. Now you have all your floats right there.